cue music. Yeah. <laughs> Hello! We're back. We're back for another mini episode. Hope everyone had a good Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 I, we, I do hope that as well. It was a, what, what did you do? What were you up to? A lot of family, family stuff. Five giant meals in a row. Nice. A dinner, breakfast, a dinner, a yeah. breakfast, and another dinner. Yeah, nice. Luckily, one was turkey, one was beef, and one was uh, ham. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. Good. Nice variety, at least. Yeah. Two yeah. sets of bacon and eggs, though. I learned how to make paella. Oh, yes. That was <laughs> actually amazing paella. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It's gonna, but you know, otherwise a rather quiet Christmas for me, but um, excited for the end, the end of the year, which is coming up soon. Yeah. Uh, not, you know, not, not, uh, I, you know, sorry that Mike couldn't, couldn't join us today. Yeah, Mike's, I think Mike's doing some family biz. Yeah. No Mike this week. Either. No technical ability this week either for us. <laughs> you know, videos or pictures or audio. But we'll keep it simple because it have It's not like there has been that many news. Yeah. We'll do a couple, a couple of roundups and uh, yeah, and finish with a with a with a New Year's message. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, flat out fever from the one podcast. We're back. Flatoutfever.com. Flat out fever on Gmail. At Gmail. Twitter at Gmail. <laughs> at flat out fever on Twitter. Facebook flat out fever. Facebook, Facebook YouTube, YouTube. Hit subscribe. Hit come to YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. iTunes. Uh, yeah, we talk about F1 stuff. Well, if you like that little song. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, you, if, you're, if you're watching this, you probably uh, we've seen more episodes, so you know you know about Bamboo and the cool intro song that we have. <laughs> yes. We, we're still talking about maybe changing it for next year, but that will be a thing that we'll find out later on. My vote's no. I, mean, I, like, I like it. <laughs> I like it as well. Um, it, even though there hasn't been that many groundbreaking F1 news uh, as of recent, um, there's still like a, a couple of things like that I that we're waiting on, we're waiting on to, to hear uh, about the, what, what Bernie or what the manufacturer is going to come up with in terms of cheap engines for 2017 and all that. Right. Cheaper. Uh, cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not cheap by any means. Um, but just sort of hidden uh, in between those news, I guess we kind of sort of forgot and lost track um, of the other 2017 regulations right like the uh, originally the they were hey um, there was they were, they, were, they were supposed to make the cars bigger like with uh, giving bigger wings uh, make it like faster yeah and all that stuff that, that, that sort of stuff um, um, but the most recent briefing that came out of that um, it basically like all, all, all that came out of those meetings is that the cars are just gonna have more downforce, right? That's all. That's all we heard, really. More or less, yeah. The wider tires, the fatter tires, which is like I think it's something less than ten percent mm -hmm. of the width extra. Yeah. But we bigger, want bigger, bigger. The car, the car itself is gonna be wider. We, what we the wanted floor, was the floor is gonna be a lot wider. But what we wanted was closer racing. That's what everybody wants, right? right? Closer right. racing, uh, the ability for a team to to overtake. You know, yeah. tra like there's just too many tracks. Like I remember, like uh, this year when they're doing like the track introduction uh, or whatever of, of this or that track, um, they would say, "Oh, you know, there's not a lot of overtaking spots in this track." But that was like that was pretty much every track. It's like there were only a handful of them say like, "Oh, there's some good overtaking spots here," right? Like yeah. I, that that happened a lot this year, um, and we want to see closer racing. We want to see cars overtaking each other. But somehow, and it just—if you read like what came out of uh, um, of the previous um, the previous meetings, mm -hmm. you would like basically all they said was we're just gonna give them more downforce, right? More or less, yeah. Well, actually, the on the, the twenty second or the twenty third, Motorsport Magazine had a uh, they did like one of the podcasts. Actually, their their podcast if. Uh, they have them on YouTube too. Like check them out. There's a it's a motorsport magazine, YouTube channel. Um, in one of the recent podcasts, they had Pat Simmons from uh, um, from Williams in there, mm -hmm. yeah. and he said that as he was pulling in uh, to meet with them, there's another body that that, that met that was just kind of like the technical delegates 
of the major teams and Pirelli and whatever. Uh, I, think, I think it's called like the technical working group, something like that, right? Um, and they sat to kind of evaluate the feasibility of those rules. And I thought that it was very interesting because um, what he said is that, yeah, you would be forgiven for thinking that 2017 is all going to be about more downforce and like, you know, how is that going to create more and more overtaking? We've seen eras of high downforce now with uh, with Red Bull and it wasn't like, like you could like overtake more, right? And he said, listen, all, all that you've heard about these changes to 2017, forget about it. We're like, it could yet change yeah. over again because what um, Paul Hembry, or I'm assuming it's Paul Hembry, somebody from Pirelli showed up to that meeting and basically said, the loads that these cars, in 2017, if we go through these technical regulation changes, the loads of, that we've been asked uh, to withstand are going to be too much for, the, for, for, the, for these tires, the tires that we, the way that we have them right now. Basically, the loads of, that, they were at, that they would be asking the, the tires to, to withstand would be so much that you'd need way more long-lasting tires, way stronger tires, way more firm tires with the with the sidewall and whatever, and that's going to eliminate all of this mandate of, of Pirelli to make the tires, uh, you know, weak and, and that they could change it. So they yeah, the, depending on the length, like the the physical length of the track, mm -hmm. uh, adding something like or, sorry, taking off five to six seconds on a lap is between five and ten percent of a lot of tracks. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So they should have signed with Michelin, is what you're saying? <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying is that it, it, it's it's ridiculous because yeah. he, they're basically saying, okay, we're gonna the, the way that Pat Simmons or worded is, he said, listen, we know that there's like you know that there's so many people calling um, for the, the restructuring of F1, and we we need to we need to improve the show. We need to we need to change it. But somebody, he said, he didn't want to point any fingers. Very very diplomatic of him, but. He said somebody, and it's probably down to one person, up top, decided we got to make the cars five seconds quicker. They said, as long as the cars are five seconds quicker, uh, five seconds quicker, everything is going to be resolved, and that's that's the end of it. Probably the second thing that person said was, "What's the easiest way to do it?" <laughs> well, no, he, right. he, so they, he passed that directive on. So you guys make the five, they make, make, make the cars five seconds quicker. When, once it passed it on to the teams, they're like, you know, with with the way that the regulations are right now and they're going to be so constricting, the only way really to like add five seconds just like that is going to be uh, via arrow. In the corners. Yeah, via yeah. arrow. And and he, sa he said, listen, right now, if you go to Friday practice, right uh, when we do... Um, uh, f like full, uh, like uh, like full fuel runs, versus like uh, qualifying runs, mm -hmm. you will see a five second difference between the cars. But if you drop somebody, anybody, even the most like uh, expert pundits, if you drop them at a, in a corner, and like drop them there with a blindfold, like take the blindfold off and don't tell them like, hey, this is the beginning of of P one or or the end of P of P two, they're not gonna notice a difference. You don't notice a difference. Five seconds. Like in his in his point of view was like you don't notice it. Right. That's not gonna make that much of a difference, especially if, if it's arrow alone. And That's if that the downforce force is there, these guys are used to that, and to them it's not gonna be that much more difficult. It, it will be, but not an extreme amount. If yeah. anything, kind of easier. You're going quicker, but the car is stuck. The, the faster you go, the more you stick mm -hmm. until you reach the edge. But yeah, there's been a lot of, we've seen and heard a lot of criticism about it as well. Hamilton said his first comment straight up was, this isn't going to work. You, you already can't get close enough yeah. where you can get a, a draft on somebody like he used yeah. to. And uh, it's just going to make it worse. Like the, the amount of turbulence that comes off the back of one of these cars. It's just, you can't get in there. Exactly. And That's it, what everyone's complaining about now. That's why they brought in DRS yeah. to keep the downforce the way it is. I don't know. And he, it's so then that that just goes to show you it's just bad decision or at least idiotic decision after idiotic decision because they're scrambling, they're like trying to like trying these things. So anyway, the whatever you've heard about the change of twenty seventeen um, regulations, it's, it's probably gonna get, get revised. As far as arrow, as probably as everything. Arrow. Yeah, yeah. 
so that's yeah that's going to call for a whole other meetings i'm sure we'll stay tuned and there is only like so much that you can like delay all this because teams are going to have to start preparing for 2017 and the time manufacturer is going to have to prepare for 2017 starting next year starting quite starting early in next like year. eight or nine months yeah yeah so there's only so much that they can actually change but they're gonna have to rewrite it or otherwise like we are there there is a real danger that we're gonna end up with um a quite not so interesting 2017. Uh, I, I still <laughs> doubt that i think it's so such a big upfront everybody knows cvc is looking to sell or make their money back somehow right bernie his thing is up in the air they're still trying to sell the entire sport the uh, TV numbers are down. Everything is up in the air. It's got to change. It's, yeah. This year is going to be as, as crazy as this year has been, talking about 2017 and a little bit about mm -hmm. how next year is going to transition to that. This year is going to get crazy. Well, one thing that makes... With the talk, the well, talk, yeah. talk wise. Well, the, well it, also, also the cars are supposed to be louder starting yeah. next year. So and, and like, yeah, I, I don't believe this year, starting this well, year. Well, starting 2016. Yeah. I, I still, I don't think they're going to be that much louder mm. but I'm, I'm convinced the sound will be more distinct you'll be able to hear that blow off separately better but i guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see till australia yeah or practice maybe oh, yeah, maybe we'll get some videos through the through the fence at barcelona yeah yeah, yeah. But. well that, that's that's it's gonna be interesting too uh barcelona because um there's gonna be one more one new team yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and it is official now Oh, it's official. Yeah, like it's it's actually like beyond any doubt, Haas is gonna be there, and they're gonna be there, like hitting the ground running in Barcelona. Yeah, there was a that's a plan. Yeah, yeah, there, there was there was an an interview. It's a it's a very short interview uh, on the Sky Sports uh, F one website. Mm -hmm. uh, the video uh, with Gunther uh, from um, <laughs> from Haas, mm -hmm. uh, talking about like just how their development has gone and. Um, like they, they've actually been working two years on this, right? And I, yeah, I, I forget about that. They originally like, were expecting to launch in 2015, and yeah. towards the end, middle of 2014, was when they had to say, like, "All right, this was a lot more work than we thought it was to set up." <laughs> and I think originally they were their plan too was to set up shop in the United States. Yeah, and then they realized, and they realized that can't be done. It's too yeah, too much work, and then all their employees they bought, <laughs> whatever, they're all European based. But well, I, hopefully, them. like I actually, there's 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 split. So he says that people that work for them on the F1 project and the F1 project alone uh, are about 150, 160 of them, um, split between Italy, Adelara, and Ferrari, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, England, definitely a Ferrari. They were using that wind tunnel, <laughs> which is okay. Well, it's all right. <laughs> well, Ferrari was using their wind tunnel. Oh uh, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and 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 the states. So split among th uh, three countries. Probably a big chunk of them are going to be in England because that's going to be central for everybody. Yeah. Um. Uh. But yeah. So they've worked out those kinks. Um. It had like the video was actually uh, at one of their facilities, so you can see like he's like, we got the stuff for the garage basically already. We have like containers. You know, we have everything that you need. To um, yeah. all, the, all the logistical stuff that yeah. you need, yeah, all yeah, all the, the packaging, the you know, the and and that S must be that stickers. Must be, yeah, Look at how many stickers they need? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just some labels alone, or like little boxes to put like you know bol bolts and nuts, like all of that. Yeah. So they have it all. They have all the tools. Um, crucially, um, the the design of the chassis has already. He's like he's like don't worry about that. Like that's. Dallara has that. Not only do they have it, they're already making it, so they will be there for Barcelona, basically. So Dallara is already. That was a. Uh, I don't think we got to show it on the show, but or actually we did. There was a photograph of the team's first practice pit stop on their car. They had uh, no no proper livery or, or labels or anything on it. Probably not even engine in it yet. No. But no. they were practicing changing tires and whatever i guess changing wings and adjusting things on pit stops so that that, that was already almost a month ago they've been yeah. doing that well if you think about it we're like what like maybe like what eight to ten weeks from the barcelona test yeah. it's gonna be in february it's right be in january in two days 
Yeah, yeah. So, you, so we're 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 Seven almost weeks. there. About eight eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we still have our slow <laughs> test. It's really close. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Um, but so, but they're gonna be there. They're gonna be there. And one of the interesting things that he said is that um, <laughs> people kept asking him about the livery. Is it gonna be yellow or whatever? And he says that, like, he's like, believe me, I don't know. I don't even know because uh, Haas himself, like Gene is taking the matter of delivery quite personal oh. and he's like he thinks he's like the way it's looking we're probably gonna like wait till the very last minute <laughs> so there's not gonna be an unveiling if any if they do an unveiling of the car he says it's gonna be maybe a day before the Barcelona test starts like when when they get there um, they're gonna maybe do they kind of have to do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> also because they're, they're on a very tight timeline but the sponsors will they even demand that yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, number two, uh, they asked him about like, have you like, hey, like, have you like, seen them this new Ferrari engine? Kind of like, like, he's like, he's like, no, like Ferraris, Ferraris gonna take their time with that, and like, yeah, like he basically made it seem like they're they're still working on it, they're gonna be working on it till the very last minute. They won't give yeah. it to them uh, until a week before, maybe, or a few days before Barcelona. He's like, what? that's yeah. <laughs> So, so that's, he's like, yeah, the engine is going to be the last thing that goes in the car, he said. So, I'm sure that, like, Ferrari has... Alright, we're back with a different camera, because <laughs> the other one quit out mid-sentence on us. Sorry about that. We're okay. talking about Ferrari. Yeah, basically quit out on a, on a segue there, so uh, we're saying uh, Haas, is gonna, Haas is going to get their engine from Ferrari about a week, a week before the Barcelona test. Before the Barcelona test. And then I segued into this um, story from Auto Motor and Sport, <laughs> talking to um, Nikki Lauda the other day. Or sorry, yeah, Nikki Lauda and Bernie Ecclestone. First, they started with Ecclestone. Ecclestone said that uh, just regarding this whole spat with the new engines and cheaper engines and alternate engines, etc., etc. There's a quote from Bernie Ecclestone, an agreement between Mercedes and Ferrari exists. Mercedes even helped Ferrari a bit technically, which is why Ferrari caught up and they're happy. It means they're both rowing in the same boat, end quote. So, obviously, as I said, he didn't see <laughs> they went to Lauda for a counter quote, and he answered, let's clear one thing. <laughs> Ferrari are a rival to Mercedes, and, <coughs> excuse me, one that we must always defeat. We aren't talking about an alliance. In terms of politics and on major issues, there are similar interests that Honda and Renault also agree on. So basically agreeing without disagreeing. Yeah. And like we talked about with Mike uh, two or three episodes back, there was a whole scandal about a Mercedes uh, engineer had gone into some computer, yeah. some computer servers and stolen some data onto some USB sticks tried to cover his tracks. Spygate part two scandal. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then went on to work at securing himself a job at Ferrari, yeah. who made a public statement saying that no. he will not be working at Ferrari <laughs> in the foreseeable future. <laughs> it's so funny how they I, know, I don't know how far they can see into the future, but <laughs> I kind of doubt it's very far. So allow to continue. As for the rivalry between Mer Ferrari and Mercedes, Lauda had placed down the significance of quote, Clear was Clear, who is a man named Jacques Clear, who now works for Mercedes, okay. or sorry, who now works for Ferrari, was Lewis Hamilton's engineer for his car. Mm. He now works for, for Ferrari. Clear was responsible for Hamilton's car, but has been out for 12 months, which is a long time in Formula One. And as for other defections, <laughs> Lauda continued, it isn't as big as a deal as you and others have made it out to be. Ferrari have signed three people, and it's true, but it happens. However, things are stable and we're not worried. Probably because they're in collaboration. <laughs> Which, it kind of makes sense because they have an alliance between themselves against the other teams, especially Red Bull, who wanted yeah. a new engine from well, one of them, a competitive engine. More, more crucially, it's, it's an alliance against Bernie at this point. It's yeah. the constructors, constructors versus Bernie. Oh, yeah, because they do not want this new engine to come in, yeah. because they've gotten away now with supplying Toro Rosso with last year's engine, which is what, I guess, Sauber is getting, and as, well. as well as Lotus, right? 
There's a, oh, sorry, look, look. not for uh, confused. Sabers get in, and, and who else? And that's it. Stuck. For next year, that's it. Yeah, because uh, Manor used to run their engines, but they're yeah, going to be doing Mercedes. Mercedes now. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. It's it's definitely interesting, and, and this saga will play off. I'm sure until the end of January, once the decision is reached, possibly before that, like possibly when, uh, um, you know, January 15, when the when the constructors are supposed to like show their proposal uh, to the FIA of the, of the cheaper engine. Right. Yeah. But it, it, this is all, it, and this is this is media stuff, and that's that's how Bernie likes to fight his battles. <laughs> right. And I think something I also said when we were getting cut off is uh, somebody posted. Uh, Today I learned type of post on Reddit Ooh, yeah. um, in the past day. So interesting about Mercedes. Between 2014 and 15, Mercedes got the same number of poles, the same distribution of poles between the two drivers, between Hamilton and Rosberg, mm -hmm. the same number of podiums, the same number of wins, and only a two-point difference between their 2014 and 2015 World Championship. The, effort, the constructors the constructors efforts which huh. was pretty interesting so relatively like they've obviously improved their car they've got more downforce so the, the difference was really like who got him like so Lewis just got the most of them but in terms of team Mercedes Merce yeah Mercedes relative to Ferrari mm -hmm. they've, they've maintained their position and their points but Ferrari's, Ferrari if you look at their points their number of poles their number of wins they're up oh yeah they're up from the year, the previous year and beat the prediction for the, their own prediction for the year, which for Honda sure. didn't do. Yeah. Well, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> we saw how that whole Honda thing went. Well, it's gonna. I think this year is gonna be interesting, especially. So at the end of the season, there was talk like Toto Wolf was threatening uh, through the media Hamilton and Rosberg about. Oh man. Oh, we yeah. might have to fire one of you guys. We're not. It doesn't matter who. We could be either one of you guys, but to keep for the good of the team. Yeah. Can't have this rivalry and stuff. And now he's back in the news this week about uh, sort of a you can tell this is like a fluff piece this is an article from the Daily Mail the oh, the UK so there's about eight pictures of Toto Wolf posing at a nice restaurant with some <laughs> fancy lighting and portraits be painted behind him here he's on a, a nice bench yeah. okay, these are all like he spent the afternoon getting photographs taken for this article <laughs> so he's kind of backed up he says uh, we can't let ourselves go to the dark side and that maybe letting them fight more would be good for the, the sport but he doesn't seem to specify about them whether or not they're fighting on the track mm -hmm. or fighting in the press conference, conferences and throwing hats at each other and stuff I don't know but yeah whatever go back to how they were two years ago yeah Nika hit me let them fight each other let them crash they're still yeah. gonna win the championship maybe, maybe. no who knows who, man yeah, who knows? I think like in, in the back channels I think Mercedes is actually well, or, or some people are saying that Mercedes is actually scared of how much Ferrari could improve. Yeah, like if especially it, if they help them. <laughs> <laughs> well, and remember, like Marquina said, like way earlier in the year, he said, "Don't worry, we're 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 already working on the 2016 power unit. We're not gonna we haven't stopped working on the 2015 power unit, but we're already working on the 2016 power unit, and it's gonna be good." Like he already yeah. said, yeah. and Marquina doesn't just like throw stuff out in the media like. Like Bernie does, or uh, or like Honda does. Yeah, <laughs> Honda, Honda was too. Like, all right, I don't think, like I said, I don't think he's allowed to hold the microphone too often anymore. But uh, but um, yeah, I think I think Ferrari have been better as far as the media goes about kind of hiding what they have been doing with their engine, mm. whereas it seemed pretty clear to me at least that Honda and Renault their final uh, engine upgrades the final points they spent at the end of the year they were like pretty open about saying this doesn't really affect especially Honda's was specified that they worked on the exhaust system something like something to do with the exhaust and that it didn't really help this year's effort but like I was speculating I think it goes towards uh, next year's regulation with the change yeah. of splitting the exhaust with the, uh, the blow off and the pure engine exhaust into, right. into two pipes or three pipes three symmetrical pipes if they want um, I think it's, it works towards that but at the same time the FIA and Formula 1 itself wasn't really clear if there's some sort of allowance or free points allowed to change that or what like how do you just implement 
the blow off different you know what I mean yeah there's, there's all, all they that, say like, like they just force them like spend whatever points you need to make it comply I guess that was what the ruling was right to each, uh, to each team well they have the the exhaust it, it, even though it, like, it is included in, in the tokens they're not major tokens I think it's like only like one token or something like that yeah they're, yeah. they're small but I don't know those teams they had a handful left at the end of the year yeah. like six, seven, eight, nine. Whereas going into next year and again, each team is going yeah. coming back with a mountain now. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be a lot like, like a lot 20s, of room. twenty or thirty something. And that probably like got bundled in. Okay, we're gonna give everybody like this many points, and some of that you know you're gonna have to use for your for your exhaust. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. It was, it's too complicated. But I guess, starting for the start of the season, we'll go over that again. Yeah, how many points everyone gets this year and next year? Wait okay, for twenty seventeen. Who knows what we're gonna get? <laughs> it might change the whole point system again. It might change all the rules. Though. They they change everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, everything is still up for discussion for twenty seventeen, uh, which is um, it, it, it's, it's just it, it it just goes to show like that's just the fragile state that F one is in right now. Yeah. But it is simply and, and purely because these people at the top just can't agree. Yeah. Everybody's big ego, ego battle. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just, uh, just as a, as an aside to that, yeah. Um, just, I, I know you brought up Mercedes and like their performance and whatever, but you know Mercedes, like out of the Mercedes customer teams, you can say, whereas, for example, the most improved is probably um, Force India. They did a great, great job this year. Um, yeah. The. The number two is is uh, uh, Williams, right? Yeah. Um, and there's still quite a bit, like a bit of a ways be- uh, behind. They are. They're. They're. I would say they're more of a midfielder team than than a, than a front runner, for sure, right? Yeah. Well, and they're at the top of the midfield, but they're they're midfielder. They weren't like they weren't really yeah. challenging for wins. But they've been competitive with some of the manufacturer yeah. teams, especially in qualifying the one shot runs and. Right. Yeah. But then, and look at where where Bottas would have been if Raikkonen wasn't there with him at a few a few crucial moments too. Yeah, no, for sure they're doing great. And then it's it's they, just they it's basically just, they had given up on this year's car too, like close to the end of the season. Right. Yeah. They had some some type. It was of, too. It was too like it, it was hard. It was too hard on the on the rear tires. Yeah, they had so some they, sort of oh, balance so problem yeah. that they like was inherent to their car, and they yeah. just decided to abandon it and. Just use that, or not a band. Use it for the rest of the year as is, mm-hmm. and focus on next year. And Actually, on, seeing where they were this year, the chassis must be great. On 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 that, like the Pat Simmons did say a couple of things, like you know what, like if you ask me right now, like is the car gonna look like, like a complete revolution? He said no. He said a couple of the things that they wanted to like be completely revolutionary, like that they thought that like they could like really like gain some advantage, they tried out. They don't work. They had to go back. Go back. Uh, so he said that if you look at the car, it's not gonna be wildly different, but a lot has changed that like you can't necessarily see. Mm. Right. So that so that, that that's that's cool. But just going back to like you know the fact that even though they're like the out of the customer teams of Mercedes, they're quite a, quite a ways behind. Um, he said, like he they basically asked him like, hey, why why is that? Like why are you not up there? With uh, with the other mis- like you know up up at the front more often, mm-hmm. um, and he said, uh, I can, I can give you two hundred and fifty million answers for that, each one costing a pound, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and and that is why, um, and it it was understood that, that was a bit of a cheeky answer, but the fact is, and the, the way that he tried to explain it like made a lot of sense, and it's that the way that the rules are right now. They're so, like they're, they're they're so restrictive, uh, yeah. in terms of, of, of just really creative solutions that they can that they can employ. That the real performance advantage that you can do sometimes is by attention to detail, and attention to detail in many 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 different aspects. And the way that he that he said is that listen, attention to detail is something that is very expensive and very time consuming and and you you basically need like so you basically need like you know one person working on like a tiny little detail of a car and it's only the teams that have these massive budgets that can really really focus on having 
a huge amount of teams. Remember that we talked about um, Mercedes uh, with the, with their like uh, mission control back in Stuttgart. Like, listen to this: hundreds yeah. of people just looking at uh, tiny little things. Just related in that that fluff piece article I just mentioned about Total Wolf. Um, he was going back and forth about managing these drivers' egos and everything. He said at the end of the day, Lewis and Ro- and Nico Rosberg are two of twelve hundred people that he's responsible for. Twelve hundred to get six hundred people per car, right? Which Williams doesn't. They just don't have. I think that's what people. That's a, there's six hundred details they can work on that Williams just can't. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's what that's what it's it's very exciting, and people are very excited <clears throat> to see Haas do well, because yeah. if Haas can can make a dent with only 150 people, like that's gonna be that's gonna be huge. That's gonna change yeah. a lot. That's where his business yeah. experience and the uh, field that he operates in with CNC machines and precision, mm-hmm. and and like precision engineering. That's the world he operates in. I think he must have a lot of experience in that. Oh, absolutely. It's going to help him out. Yeah. Uh, also, a nice, nice segue. Something else that was purchased for one pound <laughs> was, was it? the Lotus F1 team by Renault. Oh. <laughs> they managed to negotiate the team down to one pound. Just because all they have is debt. Debt, debt. <laughs> yeah. we, should, we, we, we speculated, like, back at, I think it was in, in Spa. Remember, the, the, yeah. the trucks were locked down, and they weren't allowed to pull the trailers like they weren't allowed to move their equipment because some debts weren't paid and Bernie had to buy them lunch a few times in the year because pay their paychecks for one month because they couldn't they couldn't get their payroll straightened out and I think Renault's deal behind the scenes was pushing how much debt bringing that debt to the forefront right letting the collectors come forward and then getting the team for nothing just I I know they, they assumed a lot of that debt oh yeah Apparently, there another thing that uh, that that came out in that podcast with Pat Simmons is that um, uh, Renault is is looking as an uh, as an operating budget uh, somewhere around two hundred million euro. Yeah, uh, that's they they yeah they, they've committed they've committed <laughs> it, a huge amount of money, it, something it, like it, one and a half billion dollars for the next so many years. But it's it's funny because like when when he said like oh yeah. To, to, <laughs> Pat Simmons' answer to that was basically, "Oh yeah, two hundred million euros. You can go racing with that. He's like, hey, yeah, you can go racing with that." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> holy Jesus. Yeah. Uh, but we're, again, okay. So that's another thing to to look forward to for sure. Uh, a competitive uh, uh, Renault, uh, like a competitive, you know, that team based out of Enstone. I think it's gonna take them next year to get their shit straightened out. Gonna take them most, most they of have the, the power year. unit. Yeah. But I think they're, they're going to restructure the team to, oh, yeah. to fit their, and their promote their, their everything. And, and it's it's not... It, 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 they, they might be looking at even like two, three years down the line to actually start like winning races and, and you know be competitive through and through. Yeah. Um, because uh, that, and that's another thing that Pat Simmons said is that the way it works with like, you know, even if you wanted to like bring somebody else from another team or whatever... A lot of those people are locked in long-term contracts, and you have to wait for those contracts to expire to even be able to look. And bringing yeah. people from outside of F one, just the sad thing about it is, you, you you can't really. It's you have to have experience in F one to be able to, or in, in motorsport really to like to really be able to work for F one. You which is weird, and it's it's one of the things that Adrian Newey, well, like well that that was one of his things. Like listen, like we we've lost a lot of like influx of like new engineers and whatever it's just it's like it's some of the same people just being passed back and forth forth and obviously that's going to have to change but that is another problem that f1 is going to be faced in the near future once like all these people start retiring and where do they come up with these uh with these new next exciting engineers formula e is one source i guess so yeah the uh gp2 is growing it seems like it's i've been growing and they're sort of like rebranding GP2 to the, the Formula, Formula 2, 2 right? Yeah. So I think probably there'll be, once they do that, they'll probably slowly introduce a little bit of engineering and leeway with the rules because the way it is now, it's more like Indy, I guess. Yeah, where everything is more, more yeah, yeah. specified for each car. They must be going to be opening that up a little bit, at least for adjustments and for letting drivers learn. Like, how do you. 
But once once the FIA has like full, like you know control of the regulations, then yeah. they'll just change that as 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 and needed. Be more in line and be like the pinnacle of feeder series for, yeah. for Formula One. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's a, for anyone that's interested, the the Renault deal, like the business side of it, is I didn't get all the details because try to keep a shorter episode this week and everything, but it, it's it's interesting how they worked it out. It's a, again, it's super complicated. Lots of shareholders, different people owning different percentages and different percentages of control. We'll get into it at a later episode. Yeah, we'll get back to that for sure. Yeah, we got- as, as far as Aston Martin, they're absolutely not coming in now. So they, they basically said like, they've had very thorough discussion with Force India, and uh, basically at the end of the day, their their point was what any investor or sponsor to F1 would hope to get out is to prove their, their engineering or their product or something like that. And there's not really a place at the team for them to push any of Aston Martin technologies and they weren't sure at the end of the day what they could really get out of it. Aside from like, say Force India wins some races and people are gonna say, oh, like, what, what has Aston Martin contributed? Oh, some, some stickers and money. <laughs> if you say that, then yeah. there, there's absolutely, they're right. Yeah, you know, unless there's a way that they can get in and offer technical assistance, that's like branded technical assistance type of thing. Kind of what Tag Heuer is Tag, hoping yeah, to like do. Tag is doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, kind of makes sense for them. So there's not going to be any, any, <laughs> any force India tie up with them. Too bad because those guys like could really use the cash, I'm sure, and and they've proven that they can do it. Yeah. They've proven definitely this year with that B spec car. And that B spec car. Uh, apparently, since they introduced it, scored more points than Red Bull. Force India. Yeah. Yeah. I read uh, like yeah. a season review type interview with um, with the two drivers there, and, uh, and yeah, they seem super happy. Two great drivers. Yeah. That, that really have matured. Like Checo, Checo saying he's at the top of his career right now. He's at the top of his game, especially like Mexico seemed to like yeah. invigorate him. He's got a home race now. Then he he know like it's, it's kind of like they're similar situation to Williams that they're both coming trying to come back super hard next year. But uh, all like as far as a whatever small criticisms and stuff of DJ Malia, sorry for the uh, sirens. Yeah. So, uh, as for the city life, yeah. it's kind of annoying. <laughs> oh, it's getting louder. Oh, they're getting closer. Well, yeah, they uh, what they did this year with their car, like you said pretty amazing it's promising for next year yeah. big, big time um well now I guess I mean that's that's pretty much like all I had in terms of short pointers to keep us to, to whet our appetite for next year do you have anything else yeah one final two weeks ago we went over as deep as we could the new tire regulations but there were one or two things that from the official regulation uh, description was kind of hard to uh to really figure out. Oh, the tires. The tires, yeah. yeah. So for the 2016 rules, the 13 sets. Let's, let's <laughs> do a re- just a final a recap of that. Yeah. So there's going to be 13 sets per driver per weekend. Okay. Because we, that was something that kind of we're stuck on. It's not per team. Per individual driver gets their own choice of tires. Nice. There will be two tires specified, nominated mm-hmm. by Pirelli for the race, one of which must be used. Okay. There are one set for the first 40 minutes of P1 which I think we missed when we talked about this the other day which must be used so there's one set so that, that's sort of what it is now you have like you have your extra set of like whatever the but uh, this set can be used for the first 40 minutes of P1 and that's it, that's it. it will, from minute 0 to minute 40 yeah that's, how, that's how it is right now but with half an hour the first half an hour okay so yeah, yeah it's 40 minutes you nice. give that set back okay. and then as far as I know the practice tires it's it's uh, if you number them out, you get, you can easily get two fresh sets per practice session. That's okay. how they. That's how they, they space out. So who knows? If one team might sit back for one practice, especially if they crash the car and use three in the next set or whatever. But basically, have two sets per practice. There are, for the qualifying, mm-hmm. if you qualify in Q two, and don't make it to Q three. Okay. These are the tires you start your race on. Right. So that's that's like this year, like this right. year. Okay. As well as the two sets that are nominated for the race, one of which you must use. There is one set of the softest 
nominated for the weekend of the three nominated for the weekend. One, the softest one, must be used by cars making it into Q3. Right. I want to get all practice tires must be handed back at the end of each session. So if you use this a set in a practice session, when the lights turn okay. red at the end, you can't use it in the race. Flight, you can't use it by qualifying. Yeah, when the flag comes out, those okay. tires go back to Pirelli. Okay. So, if you go into Q3, <laughs> and I'm still not 100%, I, I run this like five times, and even Ted from Sky, Ted's notebook put out a special uh, video with Play-Doh balls representing the, the tires, I'm trying to explain this today. If you make it to Q3, <laughs> and you make it to the top 10, <clears throat> right, you will give that set of tires back. Yeah, so the last five people. The last 10. The, the, the last top 10 guys yeah. that are qualified, position 1 to 10, yeah. just give those tires back. So they can't use the super, super soft or whatever, like the, the right. softest, because that's going to be the softest compound. And I believe yeah. that you then start your race on the Q2 tires. Oh, okay. okay. I don't that... believe that you get to go with a fresh set of whatever you want. You go back to your Q2 tires. Ah. So this is what Ted, Ted was trying to do. Which again, I'm not 100% clear, but I believe if you're in the Q3, qualify outside the top 10. Right, so the last five people that made it to Q3, in Q3 yeah. have an open tire choice, uh, as far as I know. Which is awesome because, they, see, and this is what I was saying. Let's say by a fluke, uh, Manor Mercedes makes it to Q3. They know that they're not going to be fighting for the top 10 spots. Lock the car down, save that extra set of the super, 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 super soft tires, start the race with those, and try to do some overtaking there at the beginning of the race. Right. Wicked. And, and the, other, the other strategy is for people in Q2, mm -hmm. if you don't think or know that you're not going to make it to Q3, you can back off and set yourself somewhere in the midfield but you start the race on a Fresh. fresher set of tires. Oh, nice. And if you're one of the people that qualifies in top 10 and goes back to your Q2 tires... Mm. It's depending on how hard you went to make it to the next session, uh -huh. you're starting a race on the softest tires that are worn, and you're going to be stopping in the first yeah. handful of laps. Yes. Two, three, four, or five S laps, depending on if you super soft, soft, or soft, yeah. or the ultra soft. That's so what shuffle things up. So it opens up a lot of strategy. Yeah. This, it's kind of, this is what I was yeah. thinking, and we weren't, weren't sure exactly. Well, there were just so many details that were like still out there fuzzy. The one fuzzy detail, and if anyone knows, please send us a comment, clarify. I want to go over this one more time, I guess, before the end we're of the season. To, we're going to have to. We're going to have to. But the Q3 drivers outside the top 10, the last do, five. do they have an open choice, or do they start on the Q2 tires? Or Q... This, no, the Q2 right. tires. That I'm not sure. Do, or is it the Q3 tires? Or is it the Q3 tires? That, that's yeah. a thing. But do they have to start on those fresh tires? Or like on those super yeah. soft tires? Is it? Do they go back to the Q2 tires? Or is it an open choice? Well, I don't think it's open. It's going to be a Q2 or 3, but I'm not sure. I th and, okay. and the top 10... From what I read... And the top 10 the have to give back that set. That yeah, the top 10, they, yeah, they can't start with the, that... With that. Right with that set of the softest tires right. and that, that third nominated tire or whatever there's still a chance and time inside of Q3 to go out twice on two sets of tires right mm -hmm. so the some of the <laughs> you could go out set a blazing time in like a one lap right yeah and then just and then stop mm -hmm. and uh, yeah see I don't know then you still give those tires back and you haven't used the other ones it's it's up in the air, and I think it's meant to be confusing yeah. because there are so many ways that the tire strategy can come in, especially coming down to driver preference and how they have their car set up. Because the two drivers can go with well, Mercedes. Well, who knows? Yeah, who yeah, knows? we'll see. Who this, knows? this is gonna add another layer of, of strategy, which should which, uh, definitely I'm, be good. I'm excited for, it. especially if we like uh, if Honda can come back and rival Renault and if Ferrari which seems fairly clear that they're going to be rivaling for our Mercedes or some Mercedes yeah that we might even it might just be like two separate types of battles the Ferraris versus the Mercedes and the Renaults versus Hondas which could be interesting too right it's absolutely open up a lot a absolutely lot of, anyways for you uh, before we close this out for you whiskey fans yeah I don't know talk about that for a second I don't know if you've heard of this Northern Harvest rye 
don't know if you've heard of this, Northern Hemisphere Rye voted in 2015 World Rye of the Year, World Whiskey of the Year. I'm really excited about this. Impossible to get, don't be jealous. I got, I got lucky, I can open this bottle. We're gonna enjoy a few sips of this for the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, like We'll be back, Happy New Year to everybody. Do this, like. I thought this might peel nice, but it doesn't. <laughs> Happy New Year to everyone. Enjoy your. Uh... Oh, actually, here. We, 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 again, before before we close off, um, I'd say, like. Ooh, it comes with a little fancy bag, too. Oh, nice. Cool. Um, like, what, what, what are you looking forward to? Like, other, I guess we've talked about some things already, uh, but what else are you looking forward to 2016 in F1? Major things. I want to see what Haas is doing. Yeah. I want to know, <laughs> clarify these goddamn tire rules. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to see how hard Ferrari's going to come back. I want to see what Red Bull's going to do with this Tag Heuer, yeah. which is going to be big news. I want to see what Man are going to do. They got some sponsors now. They got an engine. They got at least one driver who seems like he might be able to do something if the car is no. any good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's a there's a lot to look forward to. I want to see what comes comes out of this uh, EU court case. Would you say you have some? We'll get into some details yes, next yeah. week. Yeah. Well, next week or whenever we whatever we we're able to like meet up with uh, with Mike and have the full studio set up. Well, uh, I think the first the first show of 2016 is gonna be jam packed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll be back. Should be Tuesday with with um, with Mike with the full studio, full show, back to normal. Uh, full story, full stories. Get to see a shaky shake. Yeah, some, some, some action on the TV. Uh, I Label's personally, crooked. yeah, no crooked. Um, I personally am looking forward to seeing, like, I, I really, I really, really, really hope, and and, and I really, really want to believe that uh, that Honda can make a step forward, and see what McLaren can do. Honda um, Power Civic Nation. Yeah. By my accord. Um. And uh, just really like seeing how things are gonna unfold. The th the th one one curious thing that I saw, and, and uh, check out the if you haven't yet the um, F one YouTube channel. They've been posting like a couple like neat like little short little features. But there is I think some... they've been listening to us. Yeah, they've been listening to they've us. They've gotten on top of it. Um, one thing that they did do is like I guess at the at the very beginning of the year they went around to like top pundits like even uh, Martin Brundle. Get that water out of there. You don't want any water in your whiskey. Mm -hmm. Martin Brundle and like a few people up and down the paddock and just like have them, uh, they had them do, do a, sur a survey of like uh, predictions of for this year. Right. So, so sometime in the, in, at the beginning of 2015 and then they showed it to them at the end of Abu Dhabi just to see like, <laughs> yeah, just to see how, and, and honestly man, like, I haven't seen that feature. Yeah, honestly, like even like Martin Brundle was embarrassed. Like he like, at one point he was like, he was like, holy shit. Like he didn't even say, cause people were like, like, it was like they gave him like the answers and like they're like, all right, what did you put in there? Martin Brown was like, oh, he's like, he's like, I put something completely different. <laughs> he was, he, yeah, he, he, he was embarrassed, <laughs> basically. Um, Just making sure. All right. All right, we're, we're starting to crap out. We, re we reached the limit again. I think you missed a sentence or two there because I just checked. But anyways, MP3 listeners. Uh, sorry, last week, just Christmas. I've got it here. We'll post that uh, by tomorrow morning. Same with this episode. YouTube listeners, hit subscribe again. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year, everybody. Enjoy. We'll, we'll be back again Man. in the new year. Taste any good? This is delicious. Mm. Oh, wow. That is very good. Cheers. Pick yourselves up a, a box of this. Northern, Northern Harvest, it's, it's delicious. <laughs> no wonder it's sold out everywhere. It comes in a nice wow. box, too. Anyways, happy new year. Flatoutfever.com. Listen to Bamboo. Listen to this. Oh, my computer froze. No <laughs> outro song. No, it says no. Alrighty. Computer says no. Goodbye, everybody.